our 25th anniversary of the organization, and so we're having, every year we have an annual conference in a different place, a different country, that has something to do with moving the arms race into space, so this year we're meeting here. We were created to prevent an arms race in space. The U.S. Space Command reigns supreme today in space and has long maintained that it will control and dominate space and deny other countries access to space. In fact, on their headquarters building, they have their logo that reads Master of Space. Obviously, Huntsville is central to this plan to weaponize space on behalf of corporate interests. The industry has long maintained that Star Wars will be the largest industrial project in the history of the Earth and all of human history. And so the aerospace industry, some years ago, in one of the publications called Space News Weekly, said that we've got to come up with a dedicated funding source to pay for all of this. And they said, we have. And it's the entitlement programs that officially are Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, and what's left of the welfare program. Those are the programs that the aerospace industry has targeted in order to defund, to pay for everything, space. So we have people at this conference from 17 states and six nations outside of the U.S. They represent, in many uh, cases, communities around the world where people's lives and local environments are being severely disrupted as these new space warfare bases and facilities are plunked down near their homes. With climate change staring us in the face today, we believe that our tax dollars should go toward building a sustainable society. And that means building mass transit rail systems, wind turbines, solar power, and tidal power systems. It's ultimately a moral and spiritual question. What kind of world are we leaving for the future generations? We've saddled them with massive debt from these increasingly expensive space warfare programs and a collapsing environment. I'd now like to introduce uh, people who are going to speak. Uh, Dave Webb from England is the National Chair of Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament in the UK, and he's also board convener of the Global Network. Ken Jones, right next to him, is from Asheville, North Carolina, and a member of Veterans for Peace. Hyun Lee is from New York City. She's a Korean-American leader of the task force to stop FAD, a new missile defense system in Korea, and militarism in Asia and the Pacific. She's also the managing editor of a website called Zoom in Korea. And Yasio Ogata is from Japan and is co-chair of the World Conference Against Atomic and Hydrogen Bombs and a former member of parliament in the upper house in Japan. So they're each going to speak for two or three minutes. And Dave, you go first. Thank you. <coughs> so, you just go yeah, I live in uh, the north of England, uh, in Yorkshire, uh, near two American bases which are concerned with um, space warfare, missile defense, in fact. Um, one is a radar at Filingdales in the North York Moors, a huge pyramid radar with 360 degree uh, coverage, uh, which is part of the missile defense, national missile defense system of the United States. It gives warning and tracking for missiles aimed at the US, basically. The other is a uh, spy base, NSA run spy base at uh, Menworth Hill, which has uh, over 30 uh, satellite receiving dishes where, from which it receives information on uh, electronic um, co communication systems. Uh, around the Northern Hemisphere, but also it acts as a downlink station for the space base, some of the space based components of missile defense. So we're very concerned in the UK that the, um, the enlargement of US missile defense systems 
around the world, but particularly in Europe and around um, the Pacific region, are pushing on the borders of Russia and China and, and telling them that they can no negate, basically, any chance of any retaliation if the US decides on a first strike. If the US strikes first with its nuclear weapons, it can knock out some of the possible retaliatory um, missiles that might be uh, there aimed for that particular purpose. And the few that it doesn't get can be mopped up by the missile defense systems that are being put into operation. And these, are, as I say, are being pushed right on the borders of these countries as close as, as, as is possible and threatening um, Russia and China with the excuse that they're really covering uh, Iran and North Korea, but some of the systems can't even cover North Korea. So it's quite clear that actually the targets are Russia and China. And this is very aggressive, especially at this time. We've seen already tensions arising really high in many regions around the world, and this is not the way to proceed. We, we re really need to think of different ways other than posturing militarily to solve our differences. We need diplomatic processes, we need talking, we don't need military action. So uh, we're really pleased to be part of this really important conference. Um, Global Network does some fantastic things of bringing people together around the world who have this concern over the militarization of space. Space is supposed to be preserved for the everybody to use for the freedom of everybody but uh, we've seen already that the military we've heard already how the military in the US anyway is going to deny those people access to space that it feels you need to be denied that uh, that access even though it's their right as a human being so uh, we're very pleased to be here we hope we can make some progress I've come from the um, UN negotiations on a treaty to ban nuclear weapons, which look very pro positive at the moment. They're due to put a treaty together in June or July. So we're hoping if we can do that with nuclear weapons, why can't we do that with space as well and prevent an arms race in outer space? Because that's what we really need to do. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Ken Jones. I'm here representing Veterans for Peace. Uh, my chapter in Asheville, North Carolina is a supporter of this conference and this organization as are local chapters in Florida, in Jacksonville and Gainesville, and in Georgia, in Savannah, and in the state of Maine. The national organization Veterans for Peace, of course, as the name implies, has for years been against war and for peace, and this includes the militarization of space, and it includes the placement of missile defense systems throughout the world. Uh, we understand very well the horrors of war, the nightmare of war, the terrorism of war. We understand that the United States, our own country, of course Veterans for Peace is international, but many of our members, most of our members are here in the United States. Our own country is the largest purveyor of war and terrorism in the world, to paraphrase Martin Luther King. Uh, we support this conference and have sent delegations to support people in countries threatened by the placement of missile defense systems, such as South Korea, Okinawa, and Japan, uh, because we understand that these missile defense systems are being used for an imperialistic purpose in encircling China, encircling Russia, and provoking more and more war. We believe there's another possibility. We believe that a world of peace is possible. We believe it's possible to convert our war economy to a peace economy and to convert our mental and spiritual selves from one of thinking about threat and aggression to one of thinking about peace and harmony on this planet. We owe it to our children. We owe it to our future generations. We owe it to all life on this planet to stand for peace. And that's what this organization and this conference are doing. They're helping to educate us about the threats to peace. And we're proud and happy to be here to support it. Hi, thanks for having me. Last year in July, 
the U.S. and South Korean governments announced a joint decision to deploy the THAAD missile defense system in South Korea. THAAD stands for Terminal High Altitude Area Defense. Experts have pointed out that THAAD will not actually protect South Korea. However, it is the South Korean people who will pay the highest price for hosting the system. So the U.S. and South Korean governments say that the THAAD system is to defend the South Korean people against potential missiles from North Korea. However, missile defense experts have pointed out that because of the short distance between North and South Korea, North Korea would actually use short-range missiles if they were to aim at the capital of South Korea, which is the most populated city called Seoul. So short-range missiles, as you know, fly at low altitudes. The THAAD system will be based way in the southeastern part of Korea. It is designed to block against high-altitude missiles at the terminal stage. So it is not designed to defend against North Korean missiles aimed at Seoul. Uh, MIT professor and missile defense expert Ted Postel also says that the THAAD system can actually be easily rendered ineffective by countries that use decoys when they launch missiles. So it is clear that the THAAD system will not protect the South Korean people, uh, and, but the South Korean people will pay the greatest price. The South Korean people are opposed to this system for several reasons. Number one, the decision to deploy it in South Korea did not go through any democratic procedures. Uh, it was not discussed within the National Assembly. It was, there was no consultation with the residents who live near the deployment site. So it undermines democracy in South Korea. Number two, the residents are very much worried about the health and environmental impacts of the radar that comes with the THAAD system. The radar emits electromagnetic waves. Uh, the people who live in this neighborhood are mostly small farmers, mostly elderly people. They are melon farmers, and they are worried about the long-term effects of this radar on their crops. Also, the cost of the system, $1.3 billion to manufacture, $22 million each year to operate. Who's going to pay for this cost? It will inevitably be the taxpayers of both the South Korean uh, South Korea and the United States. Um, lastly, uh, experts have also said that putting the, the system here in Songju uh, could very well put South Korea and this neighborhood in the crosshairs of a potential conflict in the future between the United States and China. Uh, God forbid that this should happen, but if the U.S. and China were to uh, engage in a military confrontation, the first target of a Chinese strike could be this bad system in uh, South Korea. So the people there, uh, as I said, are mostly ordinary farmers. They have never protested against government policies. Also, uh, one Buddhist monks, uh, their sacred place is near the deployment site. They have been engaged in uh, protest actions every day since last July. So 200, more than 200 consecutive days they have been protesting. Right now, the Pentagon is uh, pushing through with this deployment uh, very aggressively because you may have heard that in South Korea the, the president was impeached um, and there should be a new election uh, uh, in May, in one month. Um, the United States uh, does not want to wait until uh, there might be a, a different uh, political leadership in, in the country uh, because that may be a game changer for the deployment. So they're hurriedly uh, pushing forward with the deployment. They, already, they don't even have the land technically in their possession, but they have already started to transfer parts of this that system to Korea. Um, so elderly farmers are actually uh, sitting outside this deployment site every day, watching for any activity, uh, and basically ready to put their bodies on the line to block uh, any missile defense system parts from entering this uh, deployment site. Um, the people 
you know, we in the United States should also care about this issue. Uh, again, as I said, $22 million to operate the system. Nobody has said who is actually going to pay for this. It will inevitably come out of somebody's uh, taxes, either us or the people in South Korea. Uh, this is the kind of destructive weapon system that is part of President Trump's new budget that proposes to increase military spending at the expense of everything else like healthcare, jobs, education, housing. I understand that this town, Huntsville, is a place that manufactures uh, missile defense systems. I do not blame the people who manufacture the systems because I understand that that's what puts food on the table for their families. Uh, I am, however, critical of a system that makes our economy so dependent on creating destructive weapon systems uh, that destroy other people's homes and other people's livelihoods in other parts of the world. It pits the people of Huntsville against people of places like Songju, when ultimately, when everyone uh, want the same thing, which is to basically to be able to live peacefully and to have meaningful jobs that can feed our families. Um, Obviously, changing our economy to one that is less dependent on creating weapons and to a peace economy requires long-term planning and long-term change. Uh, but I, be I believe it starts with just changing our consciousness to under by understanding what we are doing by creating these weapon systems. Um, and <coughs> I hope that's what we're going to be able to do uh, this weekend here. Uh, and I'm very glad to be with all of you, and um, I look forward to meeting with you. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Yasuo Ogata, uh, co-chair of the uh, World Conference Against a and H Bombs. I'd like to underline that the present situation in Northeast Asia is dangerous and tense. North Korea conducted five times nuclear tests and repeated uh, ballistic missile tests so many times. Uh, in this situation, the Trump administration is now preparing new policy toward North Korea, including military operation. Uh, at the same time, Japanese government is now accelerating to prepare the deployment of the third missiles. And Japanese government already appropriated budget for research and investigation for the installation of third missiles. Taking account into the cruise missiles attack against Syria, by Trump administration, an eventual attack against North Korea is not denied. So I think in this conference, we'd like to hear the analysis and examination of the present situation, no so easier, as well as other part of the world so I think uh, this conference is highly significant. So uh, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you very much indeed. So we're happy to take any questions from the media that you might have for any of our speakers. I mean, more in general, just with the network. I mean, why Huntsville? Why, why here for your conference? Huntsville is the directorate for the Missile Defense Program. And the Missile Defense Program, since the uh, U.S. pulled out of the ABM Treaty, the Anti-Ballistic Missile Treaty in 2001, Missile Defense has been on steroids. And you've heard from several people saying how provocative it is now in circling Russia and China. Now, if Russia and China were deploying military hardware bases in Canada and Mexico, we would go ballistic because we wouldn't like that they were on our borders. But we're doing just the same thing today to Russia and China. 
and other countries, people in other countries now, their homes, their lands are being used by the U.S. Uh, to do these provocative deployments. And so it's destabilizing. And so we've come here to the place that's in charge of this program to raise these issues in the community. What do you, and uh, obviously you guys are leaving here going out to get nine way hope to, to accomplish that. Well, we think it's important uh, as part of this creation of discussion in the community is to reach out to the workers. And I think as Hyun so well said, we don't have any, uh, we're not here to oppose the workers, call them names. You know, we don't have any issues like that. Uh, many of us are veterans. You know, we know what it's like to be on the other side of a, a gate uh, during wartime. Uh, but we th also think that uh, that there has to be some real discussion in the community. I'd like to introduce uh, our keynote speaker tomorrow night. She just walked in, Ann Wright. Ann, could you stand up? <laughs> Ann, is a, Ann is a retired Army colonel and was a diplomat in the State Department for many years, uh, serving the U.S. in several different countries. Uh, so she's going to be speaking at the conference, which will be held at Low Mill all day tomorrow. She'll be the keynote speaker. So, you know, many of us, uh, there's going to be a lot of veterans at this event tomorrow. Uh, so we know what it's like to be on the inside. But frankly, many of us grew and changed, changed our opinions about politics because of people like these standing outside our gates with signs and banners. It, it opened our minds, if you will. Um, you know, like a couple of people have said this is people's livelihoods here. Do you think that standing out and protesting will cause them to think twice? Do you think it'll make some kind of difference? Well, you know, we're not suggesting they quit at their job tomorrow. What we are suggesting is that the entire nation begin a discussion about changing this hell-bent for war economy that we have. I mean, if it's, uh, if, if we're correct, uh, we heard that almost one-third of the uh, population of Hunt Huntsville are uh, in some way or another connected to the military-industrial complex. Well, we see that all over America today. In my community in Bath, Maine, they build the Navy Aegis destroyers that just yesterday fired 50-some cruise missiles at Syria. All right, so I know what it's like to live in a community that's addicted to military production. But we think, uh, you missed this part, uh, uh, we think there's a greater problem today that needs all of our emphasis, and that's climate change. Uh, our children and our grandchildren don't have a real future on this planet until we deal with that very quickly. And so we think that if we could change our military production system to building rail, building solar, building wind turbines, tidal power systems. In fact, at, at UMass Amherst Economics Department, University of Massachusetts at Amherst, they did a study that says military spending is the very worst way to create jobs because it's the most capital intensive. But that when you invest that same money in doing these other kinds of things, in every case you get more jobs. So our economy across America would be stronger if we began to do these other things. And this is the kind of discussion that we want to create in the community.